barriers in international trade. We all know that international trade is exchange of capital, goods and services across international borders or territories. In this lesson, we will go through tariff and non-tariff barriers, the application of tariff and non-tariff barrier in international trade, and quantitative restrictions on import and import through licensing. After going through this presentation, you should be able to Distinguish tariff and kinds of tariff. Explain non-tariff barriers. Explain quotas. Define the implication of tariffs. Analyze the difference between tariffs and non-tariff barriers. Discuss commodity agreements and describe bilateral agreements. Tariffs have been one of the classical methods of regulating international trade. They may be referred to as taxes levied on imports. They aim at restricting the inward flow of goods from other countries to protect the country's own industries by making the goods costlier in that country. Tariffs may be classified according to the purpose of taxes and how they are levied. As far as the purpose of taxes is concerned, tariffs may be classified into two categories. First is revenue tariff and second is protective tariff. Revenue tariffs are basically intended to raise government revenue without intending to protect any industry of the country. Protective tariffs aim at protecting the domestic industries and are generally levied at a very high rate and therefore obstruct the free flow of imports. On the basis of how tariffs are computed, tariffs may be put into two categories. First is specific tariffs and second is ad valorem tariffs. Specific duties or tariffs are imposed on the basis of per unit of any identifiable characteristics of merchandise, such as per unit of weight, volume, length, number or any other unit of quality of goods. Ad valorem tariffs are based on the value of imports and are charged in the form of a specific percentage of the value of the goods. In order to protect the domestic industries against competitions, some other tariffs are also imposed. Among them, two are important, anti-dumping duty and counteracting duties. Non-tariff measures are, first is quantitative restrictions. Under quantitative restrictions, the maximum quantity of different commodities which would be allowed to be imported over a period of time from various countries is fixed in advance. Second is foreign exchange restrictions. Under this system, the importer must be sure that adequate foreign exchange would be made available to him for the import of goods by obtaining a clearance from the exchange control authorities of the country before concluding the contract with the supplier. Third is technical and administrative regulations. Another measure to regulate imports is the imposition of certain standards of technical production, technical specification, etc., to which an importing commodity must conform. Fourth is a consular formality. In case the documentation is faulty or not drawn in the language of importing country, heavy penalties are imposed. Fees charged for such documentation are quite heavy. Fifth is state trading. In most socialistic countries, foreign trade that is import and export transactions are exclusively handled or canalized by certain state agencies. Separate state agencies are set up for each class of products. Sixth is a preferential arrangement. With due evolvement of the multilateral trading system, a few member countries agree to a small advantages group for their mutual benefit. Several policy instruments are adopted to regulate trade in the national interest. Apart from tariffs, a country may adopt quantitative quota systems, exchange control methods, commodity agreements, state trading and certain policies either to encourage or discourage trade. A quota may be defined as the imposition of an absolute limit on the physical. It is a specified amount of product that a government will permit to be imported. Quotas can be imposed on imports as well as exports. Import and export quotas may be global. 
import quota means of restricting the quantity of imports through import licenses either of a certain item or from a certain country. See also import restrictions. Quotas are more arbitrary than tariffs in as much as they violate the market mechanism and the price mechanism. Export controls and quotas are generally less successful than import controls. The effects of a tariff are manifold. C.P. Kindle Berger classifies them into eight categories. First is protective effect. Protective effects of a tariff are uncertain. It is true that it helps to stabilize and enable it also often breeds inefficiency, retards, technical change and encourages combinations in restraint of trade. Thus, the impact of a protective tariff is quite unpredictable. Second is consumption effect. The consumption effect of a tariff is invariably to reduce aggregate consumption, except when the intent of the tariff is to protect a nascent industry which has the potential to grow but would not otherwise due to market imperfections, lack of external economies or difficulties, lack of natural resources endowment. Third is revenue effect. Government raises revenue in a variety of ways for a variety of purposes. Fourth is redistributive effect. The redistribution effect of tariffs are more involved. It is often argued, especially by small-scale enterprises, that free trade favors large monopolistic and multinational enterprises, which pose a great threat to free competition. Fifth is terms of trade effect. The effect of a tariff on the terms of trade depends on whether its burden falls wholly on the exporting or importing country or is shared by both. Sixth is employment or income effect. In general, tariff duties reduces imports by raising their price. This obliges consumers to transfer the demand to domestic substitutes for imported goods. This will raise employment and incomes in the domestic economy. Seventh is balance of payments effect. The relationship between balance of payments and tariffs is neither simple nor direct. Eighth is competition effect. The competitive effect of a tariff is really an anti-competitive effect. Tariffs can be used to offset discriminatory practices on the part of foreign suppliers. Commodity agreements are international agreements designed to stabilize commodity prices in the interest of producers and consumers. They can include mechanisms to influence market prices by adjusting export quotas and production when market prices reach certain trigger price levels. Bilateral agreements may be formed as business or personal agreements between individuals or companies. They may also be formed between sovereign countries in the form of trade agreements or agreements in other areas. In either case, a bilateral agreement is a binding contract between the two parties that have agreed to mutually acceptable terms. With tariffs, the government receives the revenues whereas no revenue is received by the government by applying non-tariff measures. However, it is favored as an appropriate measure to meet the demand of the country and to protect the industry. Customs classification and valuation procedures pose a problem before the customs authorities whereas under non-tariff measures no such problem arises. The difference in prices of the product in two countries is more than the costs of tariffs and transportation under non-tariffs. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Revenue tariffs imposed are very high and tend to disrupt the flow of imports into country. Right or wrong? Wrong. Bilateral agreements are only made between communist bloc countries. Right or wrong? Wrong. Many countries have resorted to bilateral agreements to deal with the problem of foreign currency. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied so far. 
Every country has to regulate its own international trade mainly due to improving its balance of trade and balance of payment position, protecting its own industries against competition in the international markets or in domestic markets from foreign products. In order to attain these objectives, almost every country imposes certain restrictions on its international trade. These restrictions may be called trade barriers. For the purpose of taxes, tariffs may be classified into two categories, revenue tariffs and protective tariffs. Based on the method of computation, tariffs may be put into two categories, specific tariffs and ad valorem tariffs and anti-dumping duties. A related argument suggests the use of tariffs to improve one's bargaining position in other countries. Quota is a specified amount of product that a government will permit to be imported. Non-tariff barriers is related to government policies that create restrictions on imports without the use of tariffs. International trade of communist bloc countries is organized almost entirely on the basis of bilateral agreements with other countries because of the requirements of centralized planning. It can restrict the use of an imported article by raising its domestic market price.